In this video, I'm going to show a solution how to limit a number of login attempts so that user cannot log in after several failed attempts uh, with, this, uh, with the same email. So I have created the separate application, the completely new application for that. Uh, as you can see, it's uh, empty and the only database is user's database. Uh, in order to implement this functionality, uh, I need to create a custom login form. So uh, first of all, let's uh, start with the database part. Uh, so uh, I'm not going to store any information about failed logins in user's database. It could be done, uh, of course, uh, but this will be a different solution. Maybe I will uh, sometime uh, create the video for that one. Uh, here, let's call the uh, collection login attempts. And the uh, only uh, property in this collection will be user email. Let's call it email. So uh, I, it's, as I said, it's not possible to use the uh, built-in login page because it uses a form. And the logic which I'm going to implement, uh, unfortunately, does not work with the form. So I will delete the form and create a custom one, which will be here. It's email. Make it smaller. And add a form. This will be an email form. Email your email. And second pair will be password. Here, your password. You type set to password. Let's rename text uh, the input name. So this will be password input. And this will be email input. So uh, the first part is finished preparation. So then uh, I'm adding a login button. Uh, and to understand that we have successfully logged in, I'm going to add the information on the home screen. It will be welcome, login user, email. So let's set the logic for login button. First of all, after uh, pressing login button, uh, I'm going to record an attempt. So it will be create a login attempt, and I'm going to record this uh, with the email a user has entered. So will be uh, uh, other components, email input. Uh, after that, uh, I need to try to log in the user. So it will be more user login, log in the user. Uh, login type is email and I'll take email and password from the inputs, which I have created previously. And uh, the third action will be a link to a home screen. So as you can imagine, uh, if login is successful, then the actions will continue to execute and uh, I will be linked, user will be linked to home screen. If login is unsuccessful, then uh, the uh, action, uh, action flow will stop on this step. So uh, now uh, what I need to do is to limit the number of uh, failed attempts. So a number of number of attempt, login attempts. So uh, the way I'm going to do this uh, is using visibility conditions. So I'm going to make this button conditionally visible. Uh, and this button will be visible only if login attempts count uh, where the email is equal to email input and uh, if this, this uh, number of attempts with this email is less than, for example, four, then uh, this button is going to be visible. Otherwise, it's going to be invisible and the uh, user cannot log in with the, with the same email uh, anymore. Uh, it's a good idea uh, to show somehow that there is a 
the number of login attempts has been exceeded. So uh, I'm going to create a second login button, which uh, will have the complete opposite uh, visibility condition. So it's going to be sometimes visible when all login attempts uh, with the current email is greater than or equal to four. And instead of creating a login attempt and login trying to login user in, I'm going to link it to a modal. Uh, it's a new screen. Let's uh, call it attempt succeeded. And uh, here, uh, by the way, yes, it's a good idea to make a transition a modal one. And then here we're going to say, sorry, okay. you've exceeded the allowed number of login attempts with with an email and we take the email from other components, login, email input. Uh, well, maybe it's not necessary to put email here, but well, it's just the information window. You can decide by yourself. Uh, and the only button which we need here is uh, OK, linking back. So uh, let's see uh, how it works. And probably mm, some of you already have noticed that there is a, some logic problem here. Uh, which I will explain later. So I'm signing up. Everything is fine. I'm getting to the home screen. Everything works fine. So let me try to uh, go to login screen. So login button is here. So the password will be one login. As you can see, the Password is incorrect. I'm trying the second one. And the third one. Again, password is incorrect. And the fourth one. So after four login attempts, you see it says that, sorry, you have exceeded the allowed number of login attempts. Uh, of course, I need to play with the layout of the uh, button so that it uh, it is uh, located in the same place that the, uh, the original one. I think we need to move it a bit below. Uh, the issue here is that, let's see at the database, you see that there are four login attempts with the same email. And... Uh, I am not able to log in through using login screen with the same email. Uh, the issue here that uh, even, for example, let me delete uh, one attempt and try to log in successfully with this email. So I know the password. I have successfully logged in, then li I logged out, then let me try to log in once again. So the password is correct, but I cannot log in because the number of login attempts is exceeded. So uh, after a successful login, I need to erase all the login attempts, which has been done before. And this is the place where you can use countdown timer for that. So uh, let me find this component. Of course, uh, it should be small and transparent, but for the sake of the demonstration, I'll keep it here. So, uh, and this will be, a, I will make, a, I need to make a countdown down a list. So it will be a list of login attempts. And uh, of course, it's going to be not all login attempts, but only those uh, in which the email is equal to logged in user's email. So we need to erase all the attempts uh, to allow user to log in after that. 
and the action of the countdown will be to delete current login attempt. So let's see how it works. Let me delete the last one and uh, so you see the button is here password is correct let me log in and as you can see all the data is deleted so when i try to log in once again here for example with incorrect password it will still the the old the original button is displayed so it tries to log me in and uh, displays the information about uh, the failed uh, that the password is incorrect uh, and again second try third try fourth try and then fifth try you see the button a bit changed its position so the allowed number of login attempts is exceeded and if i try it with the one with the other one so still it tries to log in with the other remain uh the reason i put uh the login button uh needs to be at the same exactly at the same place is that uh user will, um, is not guessing the uh correct emails so that uh, it that doesn't know uh, how much login attempts uh, is i mean some some malicious user like the, the non uh, the one we do not trust uh, that uh, he or she does not know how much uh, what the amount of login attempts left uh, but of course you can instead of button you can display immediately that the this the login attempts for these emails uh, is exceeded but this will make easier to just to test emails and see which are blocked or which are not so uh, this is a, a first solution uh, about uh, limiting login attempts uh, in the next video in which i will make in some time i will show how to protect against uh, not call it brute force attack but like if you if a user wants to enter a lot of different emails so that this uh, database of login attempts is not uh, is not uh, it seems that the Adalo has glitched and does not display correct information so let's reload uh, uh, yeah now it should work yeah now it's correct so uh, in the next video I'm going to show uh, how to protect against uh, making this database uh, too large with the fake emails so that uh, user cannot just spoil it with a lot of records. I hope this was useful. Uh, thank you and uh, stay in touch. Looking forward to talking to you very soon.